Kevin Brady formed an institution that is primed to compete directly with Africa's biggest stock exchange, yes, the JSE. Kevin is now in studio with us to tell us more about H2X. Kevin, I must ask you, H2X, what, is that, what does that stand for? How did the good, name come about? Good morning. Um, look, when we started the process, uh, we obviously you got to start off by trying to find a name, and ultimately it stands for an alternative exchange. So it's kind of AAX, and then we said, well, A, there's two A's and an X, and that's yeah. really where it comes from. Yeah. Let's talk about the process. How far are you? You did uh, submit in May. Correct. So and where are we now? Okay, so effectively we started the process about a year ago. Um, it's quite a, uh, the application is quite a detailed process. It really is a blueprint of how you're going to run an exchange. And um, we submitted at the end of May to the Financial Services Board. And at the moment we are going through the process with the FSB and they've been both constructive and there's been good dialogue with them. Okay. Uh, look, it can be up to a six month process. Um, so at this point in time, you know, uh, we've still got uh, a couple of months to go. Yeah, um, about how many? When can we expect you up and running? Well, we, look, we're hopeful uh, that we'll have clarity by the end of this year in terms of an exchange license or a conditional license as they refer to it. Okay. Uh, once we've got the, the license, we can pull the trigger on a lot of the investments, so the implementation part of the exchange, and that'll take six to nine months. So you can expect us to be up and running, assuming everything goes smoothly uh, in the second half of 2016. Kevin, so head to head with Africa's biggest stock exchange. Can you do it? What are you bringing to the party here? Look, it's, it's a daunting thought, and, it's, and as we refer to it, it's a very high mountain with a rocky road. Um, nevertheless, the way we've looked at it is, first of all, the, we saw the New Financial Market Act, or the FMA, come in 2012-2013, um, and that opened up the scope of competition. And we believe there's a, there's a, there's a, com a combination of factors that allow us to do this. Uh, one is the, the change in the regulation. Uh, secondly, we think we've seen uh, you know, an advance in technology, so modern technology nowadays allows us to do things a lot cheaper uh, and along with best practice. And then the key is to find the right team of skills, the right people at the right time, um, from funders to technology partners to the team actually doing the work. And I think if you put, bring that all together, uh, it's very possible. Let's talk about those two things. Uh, efficiencies or costs, so does that mean that going through you would uh, lead to lower costs? And number two, who are your partners? Sure, look, we, the way we've positioned ourselves is we said that um, we've applied for an exchange license with an infrastructure to clear, okay? But we've styled our model on what they call the MTF model in Europe, which is a, 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 a multilateral trading facility, okay? Which means that you have a primary exchange where the listings happen, but you can, you can trade in the secondary market in various venues. So like in the UK, you can trade, uh, your primary listing might be on the LSE, but you can trade on BATS or Aqueous or Turquoise. You have a choice of where you want to trade. So going back to your question, by using that type of a model, um, we believe we can bring, bring in a high performance platform. We can offer members choice, and yes, we can reduce costs materially. Mm. Materially? How Look, we've, we, what, we've, what we've been uh, communicating is somewhere between 30 and 50 percent, depending on the broker. Okay. I mean, to give you an idea, in Australia, which is a very similar market to South Africa, with you had ASX, the incumbent, they had a new entrant called Trix, and before Trix even opened, um, direct fees, transaction fees, were reduced by almost 50 percent. Okay, looking forward to that. Partners? Okay, so partners in, in a couple of ways. First of all, funding partners. You need to make sure uh, you've got the right mix of skills. And we're happy to disclose, you know, there's key, two key uh, partners in this. Uh, one is Ashley Mendelowitz. He was the, the founder and CEO of uh, uh, Perisys, which then became Iris. He left at the end of last year. And then Sean Milnick. Uh, he was the founder of Peregrine, and then he's the current one exec chairman. Although I must stress that they're both involved in their individual capacity. So they're both build businesses, one in finance, one in technology. And then from a technology point of view, we partnered up with Aqueous. Aqueous is an exchange in uh, the UK. Uh, they launched in October 2013, uh, led by Alistair Haynes, the prior CEO of uh, Trix. And uh, they've developed a platform trading uh, across 12 uh, European markets. So they bring incredible experience in terms of the actual platform trading engine or the matching engine referred to it, as well as surveillance technology. And surveillance technology is actually vital in terms of ensuring you have a, a clean um, and orderly market. Okay, and keeping the consumer safe or the investor safe. 100%, I mean, you need to add confidence. So mm -hmm. we, the way we've looked at it, we've, we've using best of breed, so uh, the Aqueous surveillance technology, which follows obviously the, the FCA requirements in terms of market uh, uh, abuse regulation. And uh, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's top end stuff. 
Well, I can't wait to touch base with you again. Maybe the end of the year you can tell us how far you are. Next year, you'll be up and running. Cool. Kevin, thanks so much. There was Kevin Brady. He's the co-founder and chief executive of A2X.